I'm Patrick Bailey with Whiteboard Coder. Today is November 20th, 2022. And in this video, I'm going to go over this uh, Dr. Heater Carbon Infrared Heater with Tripod Stand that I just bought at Costco. And it's model DR368, which I think you can just buy at Costco. But uh, what I'm going to do is put this together, see how it is. And also, I got a watt meter here, so I'm going to see how much power it takes. Okay, just before I go into this, I have some, I have some links and some affiliate links. So I did find one that's pretty close to this one from the same company on uh, Amazon. And so it's a, oh, I didn't mark it down here. It's like a, this is a DR368 and there's like a DR882 or something like that. Anyway, it's in my, oh, DR338. So there's one that looks almost the same. If you can't get to Costco, they got it there. So, and also I put up links to the product pages on there too. So you can check those out and they show assembly and all that good stuff on those pages. But here's what I have out of the box. So we got the heater. We got this uh, out of the tripod box. We just got the tripod. And it looks like they have three sandbags. You can attach the bottom to weigh it down so it's not gonna tip over as much. We got some simple instructions. We got some detailed instructions. It looks like we got some something if we wanna mount it to the wall, which is not what I'm looking to do. Got a couple of zip ties. Got a couple of remotes. Got all the little hardware tools. And they actually gave you some tools. They gave you a screwdriver. And a little wrench there. This should be a 10 millimeter. I'm going to probably just use my socket wrench, but it looks like they give you all the tools you need. So um, with that, I guess we'll get going to assembling this. Now it's important to know this is infrared. So from my old mechanical engineering days, if I recall correctly, there's five different ways to transfer heat. There's conduction, which is touch. Convection, which is kind of, you think of airflow, you know, what you probably have in your house uh, with your heating system. Then you have uh, Radiation, which is what this is, and then you have chemical and nuclear. So we're not doing chemical or nuclear. But the idea is, if you're not used to this, you, you, you've probably been around with some of these where if you get in the line of sight, you feel heat. But if you get, you know, if you get out of the, out of the sight, you're, you don't feel the heat. Which is kind of ideal for a garage because I don't want to heat up my whole garage, which is kind of expensive. But if I can focus it just on me and where I'm working, I can probably get some stuff done. So with that, let's see what we can do. So here we say, we can see here's the top. It says here's the top, we can see here's these screws here. So we'll kind of follow through and try to assemble this. So we'll remove some of these little guys to protect it while it's being moved. Oh, and also this is about, I don't know if I mentioned, I think we got this for about 150 on sale. I think it's about 170. So this is my wife's Christmas present to me because I have some work to do in the garage here this next week. And I know it's before Christmas, so I opened it early. So. With that, we can see we're up. And then we have, I'm, I'm not gonna mount to the wall, so I don't need those brackets, but I do need, oh, where did I stick my little bracket? I was fiddling with it. Ah, I put it on the tripod, sorry. I should have mentioned this, here's this guy. So, if I'm looking at everything correctly, the, the, bigger, top, the bigger end should be on the top. And you can see these can move, but we will, Hook those in and we will find some, find some little nuts for them. Looks like they have some wing nuts, so that's pretty easy. Possibly. There we go. Get one. Get two. Now I do have a feeling once I get this all together, uh, like I'll be working underneath my, my Jeep here next week, I think I may have to manufacture something because I can't use the tripod underneath my Jeep. I don't think that's gonna work too well, so I may have to figure something out. Because this, as you can see, is not square. It's gonna, if I try to rest this on the ground, it's gonna roll. Maybe you could run it like that, but then it's gonna shoot up. So that's something for, next week patrick to figure out okay so we got that then we have this guy which i'll remove this tape and i think this is just a protective barrier i'm guessing just so you don't get too close to it Let's see caution risk of fire yeah you don't want this this is this being over cautious so people don't stick things too close Oh. Or if it, yeah, or hey, that's a good point. If it falls over, 
it will not be resting right against something and cause a fire. Right, there we go, perfect. We can hook those on. Now, I can do this because it's never been on. <laughs> and I know it's totally cold, otherwise I would not recommend laying this down like this. Normally, ever at all, so. And this guy, yeah, a couple more wing nuts. Get those nice and snug. Okay, so now we got that all good to go. So now we gotta get this on this tripod. I'm not gonna bother, bother with the sandbags in this video, but they are there. So we can. This is the one we wanna get it all the way extended. We wanna have that firm base. And it looks like they have this guy, probably with a nut, let me see. Yeah, so they got, uh, looks like this bolt, or probably this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and I, well, I might have used all the wing nuts. Oh, well, they're calling for a wing nut. Well, let me pause and we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, I messed up. So these wing nuts that I put on here, they should not be here. They are for another place. So the nuts should go on here. And I think these should be 10 millimeters, so you can use the included wrench or socket wrench is much easier. Then you've got this black bolt and this guy. So you want to extend this. I guess they're just being safe. They want you to extend it all the way. And they got a hole in here. They really want you to lock that in because there's that fear if this should fall over or something bad happens, bad things are going to happen, right? So let's get that on. Okay. Uh, and then we have this guy. Looks like we're not much we can... I was fiddling with this, it doesn't seem to be able to... Uh, I thought it might be able to change angle, but I don't see how it changes angle, so I think it's just kind of static. Now this guy though, I can loosen this, and we can lock in, but there's only... That's it, you only have one level. So don't, I think the idea is uh, you can probably adjust it up and down a little bit, but don't go lower. Don't raise it higher than that guy. That's your maximum height. But I imagine if you wanna go a little lower and then tighten it in, I think you're probably good. So for now, we'll just go maximum, tighten it. And then we have, what are they suggesting on this? We should have, we should have this big bolt and a nut and, well, put it 
through right here. So this should go on the inside there, I think. Oh no, we got a hook. Oh, I see. I got a hook. There we go. Okay, hooks on like that. But we have a nice space there. I don't know if that's intentional. Okay. I do that the opposite. Uh, let me think about that. Let's see what they did here. No, they went that way. Oh, and they use a wing nut. Okay, well, I guess you could. They're using a wing nut, so you can take it apart more easily. So let me, let me undo that. because you don't want to take this off from time to time maybe like I do I would like to take it off and put it on the garage floor okay so there we are I think we're good to go fully assembled everything seems tight we do have a couple of zip ties so I can zip tie this uh, power cord to the back which I'm probably not going to do today, but I do have them. I'm not sure where this is going to end up in my garage, if it's going to be permanently up or if I'm going to take it apart. Okay, so there we are, fully assembled. All that's tightened. I have not put in the sandbags on. It feels fairly sturdy, but I can see why you want to probably put the sandbags on too. So now, let's go plug it all in and see how many watts it uses. Okay, so we got it all plugged in. So, I guess first we got, you got a button up here you just push, that's easy enough. Level one, level two, level three, and off. But we got a remote, so I can turn it on. I got up and down. I got a timer, that's kind of nice. I get a timer and I can say, okay, go for one hour. That's nice. And I got this temperature thing, which uh, I read the book and it's really doesn't seem to do anything. I think there's, according to the book, you're supposed to press this before you press up and down, but I don't see how it locks anything in. So I think that's a useless button. But here we are, level one, which should be about 700 watts. And we can see we're at 785. That's good. And if I bump it up to level two, which should be about 1,000 watts. Yeah, about 1,070, that's good. And if I bump it to three, the big guy, should be about 1,500. We're a little under that, so 1,380. I'm sure it's going to fluctuate back and forth as it heats up, but yeah, pretty close to 1,500 watts. And now to put this on into perspective, if you're, uh, you have to go see what your local electricity charges are right now. In Colorado, it's probably about, eh, when your bill is all said and done, it's about 15, a little less than 15 cents a kilowatt hour. And so that would mean if I ran this at the second setting a kilowatt, it would cost me 15 cents per hour to run it. And so the next level up would be half again that. So what is that, 22 cents an hour to run? That's not too bad when you're out in the garage. You probably don't want to leave it on all the time, but you've you got to think about those things when you're running it. So now you can definitely feel it. And of course with this, you're going to, you know, I feel it here, not really there because it's, you know, directed. And if I, I'll take this and kind of point it at the wall. And I think we're on, we're on the highest setting. And I have with me a little fluke. So we'll sit here and see if you can see that. So I point it just the wall anywhere. It's 54 degrees. And as I go up to where it's starting to hit the radiant heat. 
And we're starting to get close to 70, and then back down. And again, that's a white wall. So if I give it a few minutes, I bet you we'll get in the 70s. 68, 67, it's raising up there. Okay, yeah, we're getting close, yeah, 69. But also if I go too far over here, we should see it, or too far that way, we'll see it drop down. All right. So probably pretty good for one person. I bet you if I drop this down all the way, I was going to work on something by myself. Yeah, it's not a bad level for sitting down. So we'll see how it works. But uh, also, I may need to construct something for when I, when I go run this underneath. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I have to go think about it to run it underneath my Jeep while I'm doing some work to give us a little bit of heat. Um, but also, this side is up. I don't want to flip this upside down. In theory, it'd probably work, but I bet you it would turn off. It probably doesn't like that, so I have to go figure out to jigger or something to hold it up. But, I don't know, it seems pretty good. And also, with the wall plug-in, this is about, you know, we're talking close to 1,500 watts. You're not going to get anything with a wall plug-in with more power than that. I mean, that's about as maximum you're going to get to put out that kind of flow. Anything over, the, over that, you're going to start tripping stuff unless you're plugged into a dryer outlet or something. So this is about as maximum as you can go. And also, don't, unless you're an electrician kind of guy, you're going to set something up, don't foolishly go buy two of these and plug them into the same outlet. That's going to probably trip your breaker, I meant, you know. You have to make sure you're in a different circuit. So if, if I did see some people buying these to put these outside, they do have this other mount so you could mount it to something. My suggestion, I'm, I'm an amateur electrician. If you're going to do that, you have to think about that because one, fine, two or three, you know, 3,000 watts, 4,500 watts, you're going to have to think about how you're going to, you're going to have to wire those individually. Otherwise, you're going to start having to have, you're going to have, to have their own circuit breaker or something. I haven't thought about that. I, I don't intend to do that. But if you were going to do something like that, you got to think that through. So well, that's nice and toasty. Oh, that's hot. You can feel that. Okay, well, this should make a difference in the garage, so yay for my early Christmas present. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.